alaikum everyone. Jazakum al-khair and Dr. Azam for the, uh, that introduction. Uh, Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Um, I'd like to once again say assalamu alaikum to everyone and Jazakum al-khair for attending. This is quite exciting uh, really to spend an entire day uh, to reflect and to remember and internalize the teachings, the characters, and the example of the blessed Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, I was asked today to talk about how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu impeccable character affected his society, uh, had an impact on the society. And this is really wonderful when we think about, first, why was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu sent to mankind? And as we are told in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was sent to mankind uh, only but as a mercy, uh, SubhanAllah, and when you think about it, when you think about it, um, not only at the time uh, in pre-Islam Arabia was a society so riddled with so many injustices. Uh, we we're talking about burying infant, uh, female infants just for being female, burying them alive out of shame. Uh, we're talking about the injustices to women. Uh, they did not have rights. Uh, a man could marry several women just even by throwing a garment on them and saying, you are now my wife, with no other rights uh, and no rights to property or what have you. And we also understand that we, of course, that, that time was riddled with slavery as well. Uh, ownership of people with abuse and no proper treatment. So not only was this wonderful man sent to cure the ills of that society, and what a mercy that is, but of course, to remain as a lifelong um, prof, uh, I'm sorry, example for all of mankind. I wanted to just note two beautiful characteristics of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and reflect upon those only. There's so many, but really two characteristics that I hope will really help us walk away with the, his wonderful example is mercy and trustworthiness. His mercy and trustworthiness. And I'll start with his mercy to his people and how he affected, how his character of mercy really helped to change the society at that time. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a teacher, first and foremost. When he interacted amongst his people after the Risala, after receiving the message, he spent every single moment interacting with his people as a teacher. And subhanAllah, when you think about certain mistakes that we see around us, whether it be our children, or whether it be uh, in an organization, or whether it be someone in society or at school, if we say something really wrong, sometimes the, our own emotions get the best of us, and we tend to react out of anger. Uh, we say things that we don't mean to say. We belittle the person that we're trying to correct their behavior. We may say, what are you doing? What is this? SubhanAllah, this was not the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he saw things from, you know, something as, as minor as harming, I shouldn't say minor, everything is, 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 is very important, but something as, as basic as harming an animal, to harming a human, to harming a, um, a prisoner of war. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent each moment with a Sahaba, with, with his family, with his wives, with a community at large, with other rulers, teaching the people. And in what way? In a merciful way. And to do what? To change the hearts of the people. And we know that alhamdulillah, he was successful. What's beautiful, again, when we think about the mercy of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't just show it in one realm of his life. It's very easy for us to put on our best efforts. When we're at work, we're very nice and we're friendly to our coworkers. We say good morning and we smile. And yet when we go at home, by the time we go home, we, we let out our frustrations uh, to our family and we're not as nice and we don't smile and we just grunt as we walk in the door. Or perhaps even to our parents, we're the same way. We have a lot of patience with our friends, but when it comes to interacting with our family, we're not the same way. Yet Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, he had that ability to carry his mercy with him at all times, when he was speaking to his people in the masjid, when he was with his sahaba, when he was with the companions, when he was with, when he would meet a child on the street, or when he would come across uh, a prisoner of war, uh, and even in his home. 
Subhanallah, this is the time, like I said, where we, our true colors show. Even in his home, he was merciful to his servants, to his family, and to his children. May we all be like that, inshallah. I wanted to take a moment just to reflect upon a couple of stories that really showed the beauty of his examples and how they affected people. Because remember, to change a society, it's not a matter of rhetoric or giving a few words of inspiration or letting people know that this is the, the wonderful message that I've received from Allah, go ahead and follow it. No, to really affect people and to change their hearts and the way that they live, you have to show it yourself as an example. And this is what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. And I just wanted to share with you a few touching stories that ref really uh, give an example of his mercy. Uh, one time, the companions were sitting around and they noticed a little pigeon with a few of her babies. And they just thought it would be entertaining if they took the little, uh, I will call them chicks, the little chicks away from their mother. So they captured the two little chicks and what did the mother do? Of course, as any mother would be extremely distraught, whether they're animals or humans, subhanAllah. The bird was, was going uh, out of control. She was fluttering above the companions and making a lot of noise and was so distraught by the fact that her children were taken away from her. And subhanAllah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he passed by the companions. And he said, who has taken away the chicks from this mother? So immediately the companions felt embarrassed and they let the chicks go. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reminded them, for, I just wanted to relieve you guys, the chicks went back with their mom and they went to the nest and they were all very happy, alhamdulillah. But what was the example, what was the lesson then that this beautiful Prophet of ours uh, gave to the companions? He reminded them that mercy is not just for your friends, it's for all creation. It's for all creation. So subhanAllah, in this small example, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was able to remind that mercy is not just in good times, it's not just for your friends, but it's for your enemies, it's for the animals, it's for the children, it's for the servants, it's for the rich and the poor, the old and young. And oftentimes, uh, I think we feel, we forget this. So this is a, a wonderful reminder. Another just quick reflection is uh, another little story where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, he gave a kiss he kissed his uh, grandson, Al-Hassan ibn Ali, on the forehead. And another man was near him, and he said, you're kissing your grandson? He was shocked. This man saw Prophet Muhammad kissing his grandson, and the man was shocked. And he, he told the Prophet Muhammad I have 10 kids, and I swear I've never kissed any one of them. And Prophet Muhammad was shocked. He was upset. And he reminded him that those who do not give mercy will not have mercy upon them. So kissing the children, being kind, is not uh, with sons or with daughters or with wives or husbands, with, uh, with, either, um, with spouses in, in, in general. This form of love and compassion is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of love. And this love that we give to our family and this mercy that we show, if we can't do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not have mercy upon us. Finally, there was another example when Abu Mas'ud al-Ansari, he was striking one of his servants. He had made him, one of his uh, slaves, I should say, made a mistake. And he was striking him with a whip. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was nearby and heard the screams of this slave asking for help. And subhanAllah, in, in, in all of the noise, the, um, this man, Abu Mas'ud, he didn't hear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was behind him. And he said, Ya Abu Mas'ud, A'lam Abu Mas'ud, A'lam Abu Mas'ud. He said, No, O Abu Mas'ud, no. And subhanAllah, he waited until the, the man, he noticed that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was behind him. And he felt ashamed. He felt ashamed in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he felt ashamed in front of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he immediately, he dropped his whip. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he completed his sentence and he says, No, Abu Mas'ud, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more power over you than you have over this poor boy. So, of course, Abu Mas'ud, he felt terrible and he really internalized what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him. 
And he said, I swear then that I will never hit any one of my slaves ever again. And for the sake of Allah, I release this slave and he is now free. Look at the beautiful way and the kind and merciful way that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu not only educated his sahaba, his companions, at a time where it's something very infuriating. Imagine you see somebody abusing somebody else, you'd be infuriated to the point where you'd want to beat the other person. And yet Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was able to not only stop this injustice, but he was able to teach a lesson, and he was able to set an example really for all time. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his, in the time before Islam even, was known as Al-Amin. He was known to be very trustworthy. People would trust him with, with trust Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with their belongings, with their secrets. He was a very trustworthy person. And I'm, and I'm going to uh, now tie this back to the message. How did this affect the people? Imagine now that he is the carrier of a message. And now he has to change the hearts of people that were riddled with injustice, with idolatry, with inhumane practices. And he now is supposed to give this message to the people. How would that happen? What a beautiful and most perfect role model to give to society than one who is already loved and trusted, Al-Amin, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was already trusted to the point that when he went and, and the people were gathered around and he asked in, in, in front of the Kaaba and he asked his people, if, if I were to tell you that behind me was a group ready to attack, would you believe me? And they said, of course. They said, yes, we would because you are Al-Amin. Then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used this as a leveraging point and said, then would you believe me when I tell you that you know, when it, that I have a message for you and this is something that we need to follow. SubhanAllah, that in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ultimate wisdom and mercy, that he sent someone already beloved by his people to now give such a radical and transformational message to his people. So where do we go from here? We know that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was able to change others by his merciful examples and with his a uh, trustworthy character. So what does that mean for us? That every single one of us in this room has the ability and the power to change others around them merely by carrying on these Islamic characteristics, these worldwide, global, humanitarian examples of quality character that all of humanity has been entrusted with. Honesty, kindness, justice, truthfulness, if we show this on a daily basis, when we're in the supermarket and our kids are acting up and they're asking for things, if we just snap at them and yell, everyone is gonna, around us is going to see that. But if we realize our position, not only for the sake of others, but really for the sake of our own dignity and the relationship with our kids, then we would curb our anger and we would show mercy to our children. And that will be an example, not only for the people around you in the grocery store, but then also for your children, they'll remember that. This is how my parents were to me, even when I used to drive them crazy. So every one of us in this room has that capability and has actually the responsibility of doing the very same thing. Constantly imagine yourself under the magnifying glass of society and your own family, and of course, first and foremost, under the magnifying glass of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and let this responsibility help to constantly remind ourselves that we need to carry on these, these uh, important characteristics. We have organizations like MPAC, like CARE, like the, the wonderful umbrella organization of Islamic Shura Council, all of the masajid, the youth groups, organizations like the Muslim American Society, all working towards promoting this very same concept of, of imbuing high quality characteristics through our actions. And I hope that all of us walk away today with an increased aspiration to follow the most perfect example that we have, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.